the time has come, my fellows. The final episode of all time of Night in the Woods. Yep. A little less than a year into the full-time development of Night in the Woods, we decided to do a second longest night game. We wanted to do something in the spirit of the first supplemental game. Small, made within a tight time frame, full of things we thought were cool. We had a lot of systems and ideas we wanted to use for Night in the Woods, and this seemed like a good way to do a test run to experiment and once again have something finished. And as with Longest Night, something you just need to complete, complete something. Lost Constellation went from concept to completion in the last five weeks of 2014. I have been having a fun couple of days. Um, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> well, you're gonna rob the bank? You wanna spend longest night in jail? You're gonna, why would you rob a bank to death? How are you gonna kill a bank? Sheesh. Yeah. What do you mean, what's a felony? It's a, yeah, it's a terrible thing to put you in jail for. Oh boy, a longest night story, a longest night story, very nice. Not a dumb one like Charity Barity. Yeah. Oh boy, a ghost story. Very nice. I hope... Well, of course, if there are ghosts, then people are dying in, in the hills. Very cool. What's gonna happen in the hills? Oh, jeez. Wow. It's... It's, uh... 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 The founder of Possum Sprint... I don't know. Let's go, yeah. Very cool. So, let's see, what have I done? I watched Thor Love and Thunder, which, um, oh, what? Wow. That's pretty great, actually. quickly gather snowballs. This is this is great actually. I kinda wish that um It was enjoyable. Um, interesting. A cat. Wow. <laughs> yep, the cat talks? What the heck? This game has talking cats in it. Can you believe that? Sheesh. God, I'm gonna die. Not cool. We are all gonna die. Go away, cat. <laughs> I collect shiny things from the cold pockets of fools like you. Oh, jeez. Um... Yeah, I did kind of engage the cat, so... Well... That's helpful. Her... Good longest night. Anyways... I guess what? Winter Solstice? So... It was enjoyable... But I'm not... It, I don't know, I don't want to say that I'm not satisfied with it's just, it was, I guess, a bit underwhelming. Um, especially with, like, the, the gore story. Gore the God Butcher. And in, in the end, like, maybe, like, a, a third to a half of the film is actually about the gore the God Butcher. You know? And that's okay, I guess. And, I don't know, I think I have this thing with storytelling where I end up comparing basically everything to the thing that I've imbibed beforehand. This is kind of where I'm at with, like, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I played a lot of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I finally beat the game. Very underwhelming. Like, um, I don't know. It was an interesting story, and I, I don't... But I don't hate the combat mechanics the way that I did 
did when I started playing it. Because when I started playing it, I had just finished Breath of the Wild, which is very engaging in terms of its combat, and, well, Xenoblade Chronicles is an RPG. Um, I, I guess I mean that in the fullest of a sense in terms of it being a JRPG, in that you don't really control the combat so much as what like what moves the characters might do next. It was basically a rhythm game. So Exalted Bear throned above. Wolfie in the night. Deer. Deer monster? I'll admit that one was a total guess, but uh Oh, I'm not from around here. Return where you have been granted knowledge. Um no. I'm tossing balls. I'm gonna hit it with a snowball. Okay, well that didn't work. Anyways. But, I think part of that is mainly because it it is primarily a comedy. And you can do action comedy. And I don't even, I didn't even think the comedy was bad. I actually liked the comedy. But the problem is, like, they interject comedy into the action sequences, and they're not very well choreographed. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I really expect. But there's also just, they, they kind of like, I don't know what they did to Thor. <laughs> you know? He's, he's a good character, but, like, just right on up to Love and Thunder, and right after Endgame, you really wonder what exactly happened to make Thor, like, just a, the ultimate goofball, you know? Um, and I'm really trying to remember, I'm racking my brain, I keep nothing comes to mind. I haven't watched Loki, so maybe there's something there, I don't know. but. It's like he was he was a comedic character between um, like Avengers and Endgame because you get that real Thor stuff where he's kind of high and mighty a little bit and doesn't know entirely all of the Earth stuff. Um, and I guess that really is a Jane thing. Gets in with Jane and he becomes. A more human character and that's when you get like the goofy Thor the fun th the funny Thor but he's still f he still has like purpose and he still fights and stuff and then you have endgame Thor where basically everything is taken from him very violently and he, he doesn't get any of that back I guess does he? Did they did they snap back the, the Asgardians? I guess because there are Asgardians in Love and Thunder, but it's like just the like <laughs> I don't even remember what happened at the end of Endgame when like Thor went with the Guardians. And maybe that would give some kind of reasoning behind it or whatever. I forget when they joined up. But it it's just it's 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 funny, Thor. They make Thor funny, and I'm just, I'm wondering why exactly he's being funny. Yeah. You know? Um. But hey, whatever. I guess. Oh boy, we're building snowmen. Very nice. Dude. This is literally Animal Crossing. Behold. Oh, this is great. Alright, here we go. Um, we'll put an eye right there. Put a carrot right there. Put another eye right here, and we'll put a uh, an ear, and we'll put a uh, another ear, and we'll put a uh, uh, I'm not entirely 
pressure would we'll give him another nose. There, that looks great. That looks like Loggle from Amphibia. I am very proud of myself. I'm going to give him a little arm, right? Okay, pal. Fine, I'll have this one pointing straight up this one. Very nice. It's perfect. But, yeah. Ah, <laughs> what? What am I? What am I? Quick. Are you okay? You're a snowman. So what do you mean? You're water and produce, man. You wouldn't have to know about uh, where to find the forest god, though, would you? Hmm. Well. Ha ha ha. This snowman is no help. Kill it and make a better one. Oh? No? It's nothing, I'll tell you. So you're what, a ghost? You're no ghost? Or you have no ghost? You're a snowman. What is going? Okay, pal. I'm surprised that throwing snowballs at him didn't work. Anyways. But I, I think part of that might possibly be it where you're coming off of, like, the majesty of Endgame and how the MCU is kind of in a weird position where there's not much. Um left in terms of like overarching storylines so you get into just doing like the the like personal storylines so wait hold on wasn't this on the other side but that's kind of what all that's like what comics were you know i'm in a, i'm going in a circle here I'm pray or not um no not right now okay cool but, I don't know, I, I think it could have been better, I guess, but I'm not a, I'm not a movie writer, um, just like, at least have like, pretty good action scenes, there were some action scenes that were like fun, they're fun action scenes, but it's, it's not really what I'm looking for, I guess. We did it, guys. We did it. We made a, we made a snowman. We are making a snowman. He's gonna have little noodle arms. Perfect. What's up? Hello? Hello? Oh, nice. Well, just before now, I was dead, and I'm still dead, so there's that. Dude, Ouija board. Ouija board snowman. This is great. Is that how that works? And this woke me up. Yeah. I can contact the dead. I need to find the forest god. Well, the first part's easy enough. Find the shrine and say the north's can't, um, can't go. Um, what is that? In their wings and their trees, all things die, be at peace. Cease all care, they are coming. God of the forest carries. That's pretty wacky, and I'm hoping that I am going to hell for saying that. I'd imagine not, but... Um, maybe so. I imagine that's not a real, like, pagan prayer or anything. Nor would it have any bearing if I'm simply reading it in a video game. Who can say? I'm gonna try and point you in the right direction. Um, how would you do that with such little arms? We're going down. Okay, cool. I can only go to the right, never left. Those trees are rising. Oh, and there's a to regain. Sheesh. But hey. Oh, the cat's back. What are you up to? Where is, um. Oh. You hate Father Patience. Forget that guy. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. That's, um. 
Why did you need to hear this? It's not for me or the mouse, it's for the shrine. Okay. It was, uh... There we are. She's all there. They are coming. Yep. There we go. Ah, oh, cool. So these snow things are ghosts? They have ghosts, so they're like poltergeists. Something like that. Anyways. I'm not going to say that it wasn't an enjoyable film. I liked it. Um... I, I thought it was funny, but I mean, I didn't I didn't go to a um, Gore the God Butcher starring the Mighty Thor plus the other Mighty Thor movie to laugh, you know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm trying to get away from the idea of thinking about movies in terms of their significance to an overarching story because they're kind of done with that. But I do think that I still would have enjoyed it if it had a, a like stellar individual story, because even even among the movies that are like significant, quote unquote, to the MCU, I I rank like Guardians of the Galaxy pretty dang high. The individual films are good; they're not not good just because they're not like overtly significant to the overarching story but at the same time we already know these characters too so you know oh i'm going back and forth between the alive and the ted films or something like that let's get going yeah i'm not ending this episode but it's just never going to end. <laughs> Do I have to, uh... Oh, jeez. And then she jumped off the cliff. No, she didn't. Yeah, no, I didn't. That, uh, that didn't happen. Um... My one friend that really liked Xenoblade would probably be very proud that I did finally finish Xenoblade Chronicles 2. But at the same time, uh, you know, it's it's kind of a meh game, just a little bit, just you know what we're supposed to do. Um, I don't know. It was the slightest bit in mid, and it doesn't make it irredeemable. But it was absolutely kind of mid. And I don't know, I just feel like I spent a lot of money for a game that ended up being mid. <laughs> but at the same time, I guess I have now elevated standards for stories in general. Let's put the lock on it. And put some eyes. Very nice. Hello there. I'm uh, sorry to bother you, but I need your help. Yeah, you did die. Anyways, I think you'll be able to get out of these woods. Do whatever dead. Um. Well, what? Follow your lead. Follow your lead with what? I don't even have another. Yeah, I don't even have another wooded, um, woodland freaking dead person artifact to put on this thing's face. So, you know, I guess back in the woods we go. Uh, this is more of a night in the woods than the original, uh, well, I guess not the original, this one came first, but, you know, then the, the, uh, you know, keep on walking, I suppose, till I loop right back around to the original. Oh hey, it's my my nice. Oh what the heck? A collar. Please tell me that this isn't a human collar. <laughs> Anyways. 
Oh, and a bottle. That's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many of these there are. Guess we'll never know. And a tuba. Or some form of brass instrument. Probably a tuba. I would, I would guess. Tuba. This is a really good one. Hey, it's the extra episode. It's extra episode two. So, eat it. Anyways, I wonder what exactly I'm trying to do here. The key is one thing, but I feel like the tuba... Can I put multiple on the same? Oh, darn. Anyways, give him like really offset eyes. I was about to make a terrible joke. Oh jeez. Hello there. Honk. You're just a horn? Oh wow. Honk. You're just a horn ghost kind of thing? The person who played the horn? So by bringing you back, I think you'll be able to get out of these woods and do whatever dead people do. Does that sound okay? Okay, great. I'm not sure what kind of lead I'm supposed to be. And then she jumped off the cliff. Um, oh, hey, there's another patch there that I can probably make yet another snowman on. Mm. But I should probably take this one first. Maybe. Or maybe I just throw those off the cliff. Who knows? Oh, and this, the snow lightly forms yet again. That's pretty great. Seriously, what am I supposed to do with this thing? Well, whatever. Throw it off the cliff. Honk. Are we doing this? Yeah, good question. I mean, it's not like... And then she jumped off the cliff again. Yeah. Um... Yeah, are we doing this? Come on. I'm not quite sure what exactly I'm supposed to do here. I got some balls. Hum. Because it's not like I can even triple jump. Somehow even May was more agile than this guy. But he's also like knee deep in snow, so who knows. Hum. Maybe I should remake my original snowman with the bottle or the collar. There he is. How's it going? Yeah, okay. Never mind then. Just stay where you are. I'm gonna keep talking about Thor. Um, honestly, I don't have much more to say about it. There, I, like, I think the only things I can really say will end up being kind of major spoilers, so... There are parts of the film that I think they could have either um, saved for later in the film or just not add in that maybe would have enhanced the experience. Uh, I guess I'll say that. Like, they could have within the film kind of uh, left out some of the reveals until later, or even made some of them actually reveals instead of them just telling us everything from the get-go. Uh, so there's that. But I didn't make the film, so what can I, what do I know, you know? Um, seriously, I'm not quite sure. Do I just throw snowballs at him? Is that the game? That very well may be the game that I play. Honk. You're supposed to follow my lead, guys. Start throwing snowballs into the abyss. Oh, God. 
You're telling me I can't actually aim? Okay, there we go. Alright, hey, we did it. What in the heck? Angus, except not at all. It's Sun Bear. How are we not, though? We seek audience. I'm Godtender Brown. Who are you? <laughs> and my Herald, um, Herald. Conk. Yes, that is a Glinging Horn. Back in my school. Oh, well, hey, this guy plays the Glinging Horn now. Um. <laughs> what? Uh, Glunden Horns will the curse of eventual death for all who play them. Um, yeah, I guess a lot of things hold death. Did you know, actually, every single person that uses a pencil will eventually die. It's, it's, it's a real conundrum. They still haven't figured out why. But if you've ever used a pencil, you're gonna die someday. Um, there are some other things that have this effect. Um, you know, uh, drinking water, actually, you uh, eventually die from, well, anyways, uh, but you're still alive, pal. The dread curse of the Glen Horn is the ever-present shadow of death. One day, perhaps tomorrow, perhaps when you are old, it will find you. It's not really a curse in a classic sense. <laughs> Were you expecting to live forever before you played the horn? Anyways, we who have heard the horn. Well, isn't that something? Horn Doom. Hound Doom. My Doom mates. Allow me. Oh, cool. That's pretty great. Go, we're going on the holy mountain. Welcome to Sinai, Mother Fathers. Wait, yeah. Truly really sorry, but you can't see the forest god this long as night. But, uh, I've already come so far. We must keep this a secret, but, uh, forest god's sick, and it's not very, it's just not a good time. I'm sorry. We're not accepting visitors at the hospital this, this, at this time. Dying? That sucks. Wow. Dude. It was a relevant conversation, because this game now has dying gods. So, talking about Thor, Love, and Thunder was relevant, because Thor, Love, and Thunder is about uh, Thor the God Butcher. Or you would have liked to think it was about Thor the God Butcher, but, um, maybe, maybe not, you know? Hey, now that he's in the MCU, and they've already done his story, it's not like they could do it any better, seeing as that would involve... Um, opening the door to just revamping every single story, and then they would do that over and over again in a way that's untasteful. So, I guess distasteful. So, whatever. That's kind of how I feel about um, Let There Be Carnage. Minor spoiler for the second Venom, because, you know, everybody saw it and loved it so much. He literally, he, he kills Carnage at the end. And I'm like, well, that kind of sucks a little bit. <laughs> there's only so many, there's only so many things that, like, Venom is associated with. And it's Spider-Man and Carnage. And sure, you didn't have, you didn't have Spider-Man in the first Venom. But you had Carnage in the second. And he didn't just, he didn't just beat him, he bit his fucking head off, so cool. Yeah, now there's just no more Carnage. That's nice. But, again, yeah, I guess I... We got used to superhero movies, introducing characters and then keeping them, you know, there being, like, some kind of greater significance, perhaps, but I guess not, at least not anymore, that's fine, but, uh, again, it, that's not the only kind of gripe that I had with Thor, it wasn't bad. It was enjoyable, but that's also what I said coming out of the theater after watching Jurassic World Dominion, so I don't know if you can really say it's high praise at this point. Like, <laughs> if you like movies, you'll probably like Love and Thunder. It wasn't 
like the, the most terrible thing in the world at all, on the slightest. Ho oh there, traveler. Hello. Oh, what is your business here tonight? I'm uh, going to the frozen lake. Well, that's a coincidence. So are we. Blessed meeting. And do you know the way through the woods? We surely do. We are bound for an audience with the forest club. After that, we have an arm and fire to light. Oh, interesting. What did you say we were going to set on fire? <laughs> Wait, an arm? What? The arm of a dead criminal. Donated, of course. Wow, does it have a tattoo on it that um, bears something, uh, a, a mark that seems like it would be significant but ends up not being overly significant? Oh, you're gonna set it on fire? Yeah, uh, and it'll light the way to the Hunter's Hollow. Yeesh. Well, best of luck. Uh huh. We have enough luck to go around. We have a criminal's arm that we're going to light on fire. Because as the saying goes, um, light a. What? You mean we're going to have to light it on fire? Kind of glad I'm completely unable to help you. Well, good thing I know exactly where to find an arm. Maybe not a criminal's arm, but who can say? Maybe their their crime was. See, if you just make dying in the woods a crime, then bada bing, bada bam, that arm becomes a criminal's arm. Where the heck did he go? Not cool. Sheesh. Did the snow blow? Oh, there we are. Did I really just have to go all the way around the horn? Anyways. Was. This used to be alive, and now I just need to find a fire to stick it. It's cold. Well, hey, that's great. Now I just gotta find the cabin again. Stick this fire down in that furnace there. I gotta say, it's really in- Hey, there we are. It's interesting how they did the loop in there. Hey, pal, I gotta stick this up. Wait, what? It's an arm. I need to borrow your stove. <laughs> Putting the skeleton arm in your stove. There we go. Perfect. That is messed up. Well, yeah, I gotta, I gotta find my way out of these woods somehow, dude. I'm not sure what you're expecting of me. Oh, nice, nice, nice. We're making it. What the heck is that noise? This is a great story now. I mean, you like the spooky stuff. Um, well, yeah. Sheesh. Hey, where'd the arm go? That was an important part of the story. I should have an arm with me right now. Well, whatever, I guess. Wow. Um, it's a guy. I'm walking on your porch. What? Oh? Spooky? Scary? Skeletons? Send shivers down your spot. It's a rat! There are old bodies in the north where the ground never thaws. Frozen in the dirt, is from millennia. In some of them there is a sickness against which we are no longer strong. Someday the earth will warm and the ice will melt, and that sickness will finish the work on us that began when we were first born. Yeah, I heard that news about the Neanderthals case in ice in the Arctic, too. No. Wow, sheesh. Oh, you leave you where they'll never find you. Ga ha ha. That's right. Earth is going to pull a world of the worlds on us. A war of the worlds on us. Like, eventually. Now, is that actually going to happen? Who can say? Anytime soon? Probably not. But, no. The world may never know. Maybe. Which second most prized possession? So precious it is to me, and so painful we have to keep the precious and painful close. Well, send me whether send me to the frozen lake. Oh, oh, how uh, nice. <laughs> oh, well. You're going down into the brambles like all the others, and I have to go outside to fix the weather. Because of the weather vane got knocked around again. It's really system, stupid system. Well, whatever. I'll look out on the hollow and nothing will be stirring, and that will be what happened to you. Why don't you just kill me now then? Oh, well, yeah. 
if he killed me now, I, then he would have to deal with my corpse. And that's no fun, trust me. Excuse me? Okay, cool. I guess I'm not leaving then. Never mind. Um, do I, like, make my way past this guy? An astronomer? No, you're a crocodile. Sheesh. Why don't you know these things? Go out like candles tonight. Oh, I'm twice their size. I'm twice as real. Honestly, whoever you are, even you're twice as real as they are. Adina Astra. Interesting. You named yourself, I can tell. Just the last part. Now, what would a little girl change her last name? Well, um... Anyways. And we found the cabin, and I fed the oven, and then we survived, and I survived. And the quarrel with the forest god went on for centuries, until it ended quite recently. Shut up, kid. But I swear, if it wasn't physically present here, and in here, she'd talk about anything. Um... How do I get you out of here, then? Do you mean the woman in the woods? man in the woods is a hermit or a woodsman or a hunter. They didn't have a name for women who weren't where they should be. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, I don't know. I feel like hermits can also... The word they use for girls like me is kidnapped. <laughs> um, won't do chores, access, as back talk. That is the one question to which I do not have an answer. Okay, maybe that's why. Maybe. I know you wanted to live, but I've taken that future from you, and it's mine now. And you can't take it from me. Yeah, I entered her house one time, and I never left. I didn't leave the house. Well, off I go. I never did actually exit the house. Some of that weird snow is way up in the trees. I need a good strong wind. Just need to control the wind is all, yeah? Yeah... I can do that, actually. Very simple. Here's what we do. I... shoot. Okay. And shoot. Perfect. See? Down you go. What the heck? Ugh. I'm not going to die here tonight. I'm just not. I need to see what's in this hollow. Well, uh, let's go then. I died, of course. Here we go. Here she comes. Shoot. Darn squirrels won't take a break. Not at all. Wolf in the dark. What? Quick, make a face. I have to get back into that house. This is the worst, longest night ever. What do you mean? Don't I have something for the... I've discovered your secret name. I have buried it deep in the earth, and upon it built a house. So I, what, I have to take the kid's horn or something? Yoink. Um, yeah. Hey kid, say something interesting, won't ya? Yoink. Hey, you've got fun things to say, don't you? You can't even get yourself out of here. I can barely get out of the attic. And away from that extremely creepy shrine. Well, uh, I made that poison and she never thanked me. What? Okay, I'll get out of your house. I still have the thing, right? I guess not, huh? Well, learned my lesson there, huh? Okay. Cool. Uh, here we go. Let me just get a couple shots. I don't need all that much since I'm such a good shot. I mean, a good shot. A good shot. 
not squirrels? Yes, squirrels. I want wind, black wind wolf in the dark. And then she doesn't see me because she is very blind, I guess. Yep. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, it might have been a good idea to cut this in pieces. If only on account of the fact that I don't actually have any to say I'm talking about Thor. Um, wait, hold on, I do have the thing. Okay. I hope I don't get jump scared by this lady. Please tell me that I can, like, jump down. No, I guess not. If I hide in here, she's going to go back inside. Right. What in the heck? I think that was the sound of her opening and closing the door, let's say. And hopefully not destroying my snowman. Okay, good. This is a good thing. All right. And she'll never find out that I was the one that took it. Because how would she even do that? Like, seriously. <laughs> Where's your witness? I like that I still have to put eyes on it. That's pretty good. What? No, no. No. Oh, jeez. Um. What is happening here? <laughs> oh, jeez, girl, what have you done? You watched it happen. You watched. It was this place. It was the oven. It was what you became. I didn't get to choose what happened to me. I was so cold. I was so afraid. And I did not. Who are you? Don't you stare speak, you waste of a girl. Once a twin, we fled into the woods, identical in all things except one. When she pulled my body from the water, she, the only part of me she kept was the tattoo. I've kept it close to me all down the centuries. I believed in some idea of you that is long, that is as long dead as I am now, but you survived. Oh, jeez. I am so sorry for that. I, uh, well, I guess I'll be getting out now. What is this story about? Um. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. So clearly you're onto something. Yeah, I would want to know what the story is about too, but I guess we'll just never know. Or we'll continue to find out on this episode of Night in the Woods. That's going to take five hours for me to edit and ten hours for me to upload. Because... That's just the way the cookie crumbles. Hey pal, how you doing? Why hello, nice of you to stop by. There are frozen dead people all over these woods, and I've talked to half a dozen of them tonight alone. No one takes you up on this coffin business, or you never follow through. So which is it? Mm. Yeah, I've talked to ghosts, a whole heck of a ton of them. I think you got lost and cold and started talking to snow. Oh boy, my battery's running low. And this is already a 44 minute recording. Yeah, it's gonna keep being a 44 minute recording too. I'm keep I'm gonna still keep going, all right? It can only get better. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> yep, 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 yep. Busy night for you, eh? Oh, go to heck. Gahaha, hell's warm at least. Good night. Well. Off I go. I'm thinking of maybe starting... Not starting. I might start... Well, yeah, start. I might start streaming on Saturday. Um, and I say that not entirely knowing what I would do. Probably either, like, play Isaac or Floating Point and talk about things that I think about. But, um... Missed a better days. Yeah, I suppose. Anyways. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Of course, Stevenson. Looks like this thing took a beating from somewhere. What if there's a head in there? Not checking. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna poke it with a stick. 
Yeah, you probably would poke your body part on the ground with a stick. Yep, that she would. Well, how about that? So, how do I get out of this place now? This guy is still here. I guess that's the plan. Just go to the left instead of the right. Yep, yep, yep. So, how about that? See, I'm out of the woods now. Yes, sir, we... We made it all the way out. Hey, and the people are here. How you doing, fellas? We meet again. Hope you are faring well. We're just leaving. As a kingdom needs a king, and this king needs his trusted advisor. I have a sword here. Stevenson! Yeah, uh, had a name, you know. <laughs> oh, jeez. I uh, found his helmet. He's back on the Forest God's Mountain. Just, nope, not going back there. <laughs> I would never order that. But a dear, dear man. A steady old friend. Oh, jeez. Nothing, nothing happened at all. I would not order the death of the Forest God. And I certainly wouldn't run away screaming as the forest god violently dismembered my trusted knight. Safe journeys, whoever you are. Goodbye. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. I'll be on my way then. Unless... I won't be on my way, and I'm just walking all the way over here for no reason. Yeah, okay, sounds about right. Oh, oh. But, yeah. I've thought about doing things like that, um, but I have some amount of reservation because I don't like, I don't really, it would, it would end up being kind of, politics, and I don't actually read actual news enough to be saying anything that isn't entirely redundant. So, I don't know. I don't know how well that would fare. And you can see how good and how wonderful my commentary is when I'm playing something for like 20 minutes. Um, and this is definitely a good indicator of how I fare for anything over 30 minutes. But, you know, I'm still talking, so there's that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just so enjoyable to hear me just talk and talk and talk. Um, you know what? It seems like I'm going to have time to get into this. I was thinking about, um... You know, it's a side joke in the film, so it's not like this is a spoiler, but apparently Ford, the rock guy, um, is the rock species people are presumably all male, or they're all uh, masculine, you know? And the, I guess it wasn't really a joke, but he was like, in the film, so they're talking about relationships or whatever, but he's saying when, uh, when grown Korg people, hey, here I was, here I am, hey, it's the frozen lake. Figured I'd see you here, cat. How's that? I didn't die in there. Well, and again, I've never died in there either, so pardon me if I'm not overly impressed. You did it once. <laughs> well, yeah, I did cause a lot of trouble. I have to go now. Yep. The hunter, her child, the forest god, those aren't your business. I know. You were in their forest. I may be their forest, but it's under my sky. I bet that sounded great in your head. Well, anyways. Um, but the idea is that uh, you find um, his his two dads uh, got into a lava pool and held hands for a month, and that that's how new baby corbs are born. And I thought that was kind of funny. Um. You know, I doubted you would make it. Oh, jeez. Wow, I made it all the way here. Am I the friend of the forest god? Sheep shut down the Fifth Street Bridge. Oh, wow. But, yeah. 
I don't even find that distasteful, honestly. Like, um, I guess I'm, well, it's not even I guess, I'm like a traditionally conservative Christian guy, so I'm, I'm not one that overly enjoys the kind of long interjection of things like homosexuality into films just for the sake of having a homosexual film. That's kind of how I feel about a lot of things. Um, like, um, God, I was thinking about how to articulate this in a way that didn't make me sound god awful. Because it's not even that I have a problem with the people themselves so much as I don't like when they're flung into media for the sake of representation and nothing else. Like, and e even then, it, it can be done in a way that if a parent doesn't find it tasteful, they can explain it to their child in a way of, like, well, they're rocks, you know? That's how I was with Steven Universe, because I, I like Steven Universe. Steven Universe is a good show, and I... It's not a question of permissibility so much as I find it even good because they're rocks. You know, you can make the argument that the, all, all the all the lesbian rock people are, are lesbians, but I can also le make the equally valid rock argument that um, they're all rocks. <laughs> like even even the physical form you see is a projection of light that isn't actually really... It's an expression more so than an actual form, I suppose. But it's it's like, they're rocks, you know? So if I were to have a child and I didn't want for any reason them to be exposed to the ideas of like overtly homosexual relationships among grown women, I don't really think I would have a... a problem with that within the, within the extent of it was it the extent at which it was in Steven Universe I wouldn't have a problem with that but because again they're rocks but I, I could explain it that way they're, well they're not human beings they are rocks so um, it's not so much a well they aren't really lesbians so much as they aren't really given any other choice, I guess, you know? Because the reproduction system of the gems um, was explored somewhat in the series, and it doesn't exactly involve two gems. It involves, I, I would imagine, the injection of minerals into a um, rock-like substance to create basically foot soldiers. And I'm not sure exactly how the upper echelons were created, if they were created. I'm not, I don't know about the lore. All I know is that the creator wanted to get on, like, Twitter or whatever and talk about fusion as if it's a, as if it's a sexual relationship, and I have a, a couple problems with that on account of some fusions that exist within the series. <laughs> um, and again, I guess you could, you could, you could talk about it as a metaphor, but if you're going to say outright it is an overtly sexual relationship then I mean you've got a bit of explaining to do with the Steven Universe movie when Steven fuses with his dad you know so maybe that's an oversight you know I have a problem with it on account of Steven fusing with his dad I guess and I like Stag I like that fusion I like the whole scene and I, I honestly I'm never overly fond of, like, musical numbers in TV shows, typically. Especially the kind that were in Steven Universe. I would, like, skip past them. But most of the time they were fine and tasteful and stuff like that. And I really liked the stags. I enjoyed his design. And I get hit really hard by expressions of parental love in the... I really do like that. So, again, I, I can understand talking about it in terms of, like, fusion being a metaphor for love, 
but I, I can't agree with the idea that it is an overtly sexual thing, because then you have, well, if that's the case, Steven Universe is a story about uh, a promiscuous preteen banging every every slightly female-looking entity he sees, practically, including another preteen. <laughs> so, forgive me if I have a couple reservations about that. You know, and his own dad. So yeah, again, it's it's just. I'm gonna get torn apart if anybody ever finds this. I'm glad that I had this at the end of an hour-long video, huh? Because if the Steven Universe finds out that I'm saying fusion isn't or shouldn't be an overtly sexual relationship, they're going to kill me. But hey, whatever. I don't really care. Um, the story is over. We did it, guys. We made it all the way through Lost Constellation. And, um, we also made it all the way through Night in the Woods. This is the end. This is the last Night in the Woods episode I will ever make. And next week, I'm probably going to be playing Wonder Boy and the Dragon's Curse, or the Dragon's Trip, or the Dragon's Trap. That's what it was, the Dragon's Trap. Or I'll play something that was on the series back in the playlist that I stopped looking at years ago. <laughs> that might be the case. And you. Hey, it's all my snowmen. That's so nice. That's great. But, yeah. I find... Long story short, I find that there are tasteful ways to do representation in series. But I also find that it is very rare. And I, I really hope that there is some appreciation to that, in that I recognize the, the ways to do it tastefully. Because I, I, don't, I don't dislike representation itself. There are some extents to which I maybe find it distasteful in terms of what you're representing. Because you, it is not impossible to represent things that are bad. But, in terms of, like, general diversity, I don't have a problem with it. Um, and, you know, it can be enjoyable. So, wh who am I, you know? But, it's, it's when it's just kind of thrown in without real explanation or without any kind of development. Like, the Adventure Time series finale... I mean, if you really have to, like, basically create an entire other series to, as, as, like, an appendix to the finale, just to explain one scene that you threw in for the sake of representation, maybe it wasn't well thought out. And that isn't my only problem with the Adventure Time book. Honestly, it was underwhelming. It wasn't what I wanted it to be, or what I expected it to be, based on the preceding episodes. And it was just, it seemed very rushed. Like, they had two different plot points they wanted to resolve, and they just, like, threw one of them under the bush for the sake of the But, hey, that's, I guess, how it goes. Um, and the other one I was going to talk about. But, you know what, I've basically made my peace on this. The more I go into this, it's just going to be me complaining about series that I really liked having parts that I didn't want to watch. So, whatever. Doesn't matter. What do I know? I'm just some guy. <laughs> uh, anyways, like, comment, and subscribe. Or I'm going to make an hour-long Night in the Woods episode. Goodbye! Yeah, I hope that one. I thought it was pretty funny.